starting to the top right, we have the Protoss player that we just mentioned. He is starting in red, starting for Protoss. Most spots mana up against the Zerg at the bottom left. Western Wolves Mini Razor. Yeah, and uh, this this group situation has has been pretty interesting. Like we've seen creative play out of all of these players. You know, Mana is actually the player who's been the biggest constant in this group. He's only played Pros versus Zoku so far, and he's been doing the same build every time. And I feel like Mini Razor kind of countered him there a little bit with his Mutalist play, hiding it and just sneaking up behind him, basically. Yeah. I actually agree with that. It's just like this third base attempt that Protoss... I mean, think about it. How did, how did all this start? At the beginning, we had Stefano with his Roach style. Yep. Then Zerg players like JY, sorry, Protoss players like JYP started to figure out a little bit better how to get the third base, how to not die against this Roach pressure. Because the original idea was that the Zerg on uh, Lair Tech just approached your expansion over and over again, just threw everything that they had against the third, and then you just cracked and died. Then Protoss players figured out, okay, if I want to get this third base, I have to get the Immortals out a little bit faster. Strategies like the Immortal push and two bases emerged. And these days, if a Protoss player tries to take a third base, he's going for a Robo and then heads into into the Twilight Council for the Blink and is set up against most things. But yeah. this is an attack that we haven't seen in a while. So this is like the answer that Mini Racer has to this style of expansion. He's it's like, I it's always cool that. to see how StarCraft evolves. Yeah. Uh, I've talked about this a lot, but I remember when I started watching StarCraft, even when I was playing it, um, you know, some of my friends would try to get into the game and they'd be like, well, uh, does everybody always use the same strategy? Wouldn't it get boring? I was like, well, no, because strategies get popular and people use different strategies during different time periods. There's a shift. I didn't know that this is what people commonly refer to as the metagame at the time, but I was like, everything's just changing all the time with this game. What is the strength of the defense that we have at the third base these days? It's the sentries. It's the sentries and the immortals, both of which cannot really do damage yeah. to air. <laughs> so usually you set up the wall on a map like Daybreak, but you rely heavily on the sentries to shield. What was the first thing that Mini Razor did? He went in, he ignored the stalkers, just tried to attack them with those links, keep them at bay, and then he focused on sentry, 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 and suddenly there were no more force fields. So yeah. he had this opening where he could use his zerglings to push in. Very, very smart play by Mini Razor. Not just him going for a great attack and just throwing units against his opponent, this was thought out. You thought about how do I counter this, take the sentries out, then you have the surface area for the links, you can push the stalkers back, and yet then if you, I mean, you can fall back into the macro mode. Think about what he did. He targeted down the third, those units, but he did not go on this on three bases. He took a fourth, he took even a fifth base. So at any point in the game when he realizes, hmm, might not have enough to finish it now, he can just fall back, use the units to control the map and go into attack. So a very, very smart play, and not just him blindly throwing units against mana and getting lucky. Yeah, I, I really liked it. I mean, it's it's smart, it's intuitive, the way that you, if you think about it, it's a little bit risky because mana, if he scouted it, could have potentially prepared better, but, you know, at that point where mana has showed the same builds over and over and over again, and, and he keeps doing these builds that a lot of pros are doing, it's a cool strategy to throw in there, and I like the choice. I mean, it's it's... It's quite brilliant, I would say. You know, game one, just put it out there, see how it goes. Yeah. And he went well. He's ahead now in the series, and Mana has to come up with an idea of what he is going to do now. We have him with the Cybernetics Core already done. The pylon to the top rather suggests that he's going into the Robo again, which is what we would assume here. Plus one attack also being started before the Robo goes down. He starts with a Stargate now, it makes me look a little bit silly, but I have high hopes for you, Mana. Yeah. Stick with your style. Don't embarrass me here. We'll um, see. A little bit more time he needs. Gets a Sentry out first, chases the Zerglings away. And we have no tech for him, just... Third base already up for Mini Razor, by the way. At the bottom, gets the double gas now, and here comes the Rupo for Mana. As you would expect. Yeah. He's Robo Man. That's what I'm going to call him from now on in the series. No, no, I, <laughs> I want to, but I probably won't. It looks a little bit like we will see the third base again at this point. He could also try to head into a Warp Prism play, which is an option for him. But more likely, uh, with the style that we've seen him use against Stefano, is that he tries to do the same thing again. Go into the uh, third base and then try to hit a timing here. And, uh, well, a pre-brutal timing, of course. 
Bottom left now, the tag for his opponent, and Mini Racer is a little bit supply blocked here, heavily actually, if you think about it. He's just now started those overlords, not what you want to happen. And no. I think it happened without him losing an overlord. Yeah, I think he, yeah, this overlord didn't go down, so you're right. So that's a bit of a problem. It means he can't quite hit those roaches as quickly as he wants to. Well, the roach farm finishes up in time. He's got 15 larva. No. Eight of it goes in drones. I think the other seven will probably go into roaches pretty soon here. He has speed now for the zerglings also on the tap. And as soon as we have the lair tech completed, he will head into the roach speed. The creep spread is non-existent, which is something that he could work on. So if we want to nag about S anything, then that's yeah. probably going to be the issue. That would be because it. third base, you usually want to have a bit of a creep spread if your opponent goes into a two-base time. That overlord gets taken out. That... That, that overlord lost a couple with the other one makes him supply blocked even though he started a bunch of overlords so he he's going spire again oh he tries he, he goes into a very similar style this is actually the same build he goes for the armor no. upgrade armor upgrade also in the last game we pointed it out but i want he went for plus one two also there's yeah. a second evolution chamber the observer's not going to the third base is he going to go into the main though and see the spire most likely he needs to do it this time the thing is we talked about the up, uh, armor upgrade in the game uh, in game one already but i want to point this out again how important it is if you don't go for the armor upgrade the zealots will be able to two hit a zergling instead of taking three hits so the zerglings in addition to the mutalists will not be as effective at all and this time the observer sees what's going on he sees everything double evolution chamber and the spire so now he is okay you're going into the same build again. Yeah, and he actually may try to hit this before the Spire's in it. It feels a bit risky, though. He decides to pull back. He's like, well, if there's a bunch of lanes, I use all my Force Shields, and I get trapped out in the middle of the map. The Mutas finish. He doesn't know how many Mutas there are going to be. It looks like it's going to be about 8 again, just like last time. AB able to get 11 in total after... Mm, yep. Yeah, it Could looks like he's going to have about 11. Number. Plus 1, plus 1. And currently Mana trying to uh, protect his third here, but also setting up cannons now everywhere. He knows that he's facing Mutalist again, Ooh, so he wants shrine. to be safe. Interesting. Smart. Very smart. Not uh, not only because of the Dark Templars, but Archons. Yeah. Archons is one of the best options that he has against what Mini Razor used in game Very one. Very true. He has both archives going up. He's got the Dark Shrine and the Temple Archive, so... He's got two different ways he can make Archons. One is more uh, gas efficient, one is more mineral efficient, of course, but... That is very, very smart by Mana, I have to say. I, I like it. It's it's a choice that many people would not make. Because when you're the Mutalist player, you know you have no fear, really, of counterattacks because your opponent is so focused on your Mutalist. But if you warp in one or two DTs that can really throw a Zerg player off, he's not going to be expecting that. And I feel this time he will have a hard time pushing through. We need more Stalkers, though. That's a bit of an oversight, because here come the Mutalisks now, and there is he a cannon. perfect force fields, and he doesn't. Oh, uh, it's too late. The Lings are getting through. That one Immortal is not big enough to close the gap. Here are the Stalkers now, and this time he has enough Lings on the high ground. Makes good use of the terrain. Very well done. The Sentry's dying, but he blinks down again. Takes on a few Mutalisks. Mana, this time, trading a lot better. Still losing the Sentries, except for one. <laughs> but this was a lot better than the last game, and now we have the DTs. Here they come, coming from the north. And this is something that Mini Reza is not expecting. Yeah, it does not have any support callers as far as I can tell. He's got Overseer, but it's with his Mutilus. Uh, he needs to uh, get somewhere. The third base one might die here. Yeah, it will, actually. Yeah, it's going to go down. He's Mata not ready with the trouble. DTs, though, now they're at the natural. How much damage can he do? Oh, there's nothing to stop him. He can actually just target down drones. He can even get the queens. The queen is on hold position. That's really weird for some reason. Oh, it barely gets away. Yeah, now double overseers, overseer. But he doesn't have any units. He's going to have to send his mutalists home. Yep. Sends the mutalists and the zerglings home. Tries to deal with his opponent's DT. The spire is being attacked. I don't think he can take it down. Well, actually, if he is not fast he will I think no. he'll transfuse it and he shouldn't be able to kill he doesn't even have to transfuse oh. it there There's he doesn't anyways where's this over here I... oh my god mini razor what are you doing what happened to the overseer there are three he didn't send them over that's really weird oh that the is... DT is actually still alive what is he doing the DT is still there and the overseer is gone that he doesn't realize that the DT is still in his base. Oh, he could actually go kill the Spire again. How did that happen? Oh man, if Mana realizes and kills the Spire while it's low on hit points right now. This is a huge oversight by Mini Racer. 
yeah, I mean, quite literally, overseer, man. Yeah. Overseer's oversight. And 20 mutalists, but mana now has storm. He has storm, and here it goes. Does he not have enough energy? There it is. And oh, that wow. storm did damage, and quite. Oh my god! The blink. Oh my god! 20 mutalists. Bye, he goes. He killed the spire, no cancel, and now he's killing drones. Oh my god. This game has fallen apart really fast for many ways. Yeah. He, Another DT. He's fallen behind, uh, behind so fast. Another DT at the fourth base, one in the main base, even attacking the pool now, going for oh, the Oh, that infestation pit is... Why would he make it there? He's just not... What? He's gonna lose it. Mini Razor with a strong game one, but this... No cancel again? This is... Re he's falling completely apart. This is really bad. Finally, he takes this DT down. The Dark Templar has 19, 20. 20 kills, and he killed the Spire twice. He killed the Infestation Pit. Mana takes the Supply Lead. He's also killed the hatchery. The base, he killed the hatch. Mini Razor must be... Com he's completely off now. Listen, man, if I'm Mana and I take this game, and Game Over 3, I'm also using DTs for sure. <laughs> Seems to be a weakness. Okay, Mini Razor just... I don't know what happened in this game, but he completely fell apart. Losing against three DTs, basically. Yeah. It was three DTs that killed his his Spire twice, his Infestation Pit, a lot of drones. It killed the, uh, the fourth base. And at the same time, he has four Overseers. This should have never have happened. Then he lost all his Mutalists to Storms. 20. 20 Mutalists to Storms. Minerator is the, probably just look looking. Look at the resource lo yeah. lost time. I want... I want that up on the screen for you guys. Oh my god. That's 9,500 against 5,000. Another good storm here. Zones out the Zerglings. Yeah, he doesn't kill all of them, but it doesn't matter if they're Lings and he's got storms available. The Lings are not going to be able to fight the storm anymore. Mini he's... Razor is probably just looking at the screen himself and is like, what did I just do? I what think just he might happened? Be, he might be looking at his palm right now uh, with his head on it. Right now, the yeah, run by attempt, but still too many cannons. Way too many cannons. Mana on the way to victory. The supply is roughly even, but with this army composition, without any high tech, this is what is not... that changeling doing, man? <laughs> well, I guess against feedback to get yeah, the energy. Yeah, I guess but... that makes sense. Well, kinda. But I was really... looking at that and I was like, well, I don't know that changeling's not seeing a whole lot. <laughs> this is mana cleaning house. Yeah. There's no way for a mini race to come back. It's not against storm. Not against heavily upgraded stalkers. Not with Blink, three attack, one armor upgrade, even with Infestors, there is just no way. There are no Brood Lords, there are not enough Roaches. He doesn't have enough energy left anymore, he just dumped it all into those best yeah. turns. GG, GG. well played.